Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for another episode of Health Talks with Dr. Trin. The one show, the only show to show you a path towards, well, a healthier, happier future. One health talk at a time. Today, we're veering off the subject a little bit, but maybe not. Uh, We're going to talk about uh, the health of uh, internet streaming with a brand new internet streaming service called Unchain. Bring them in, Dr. Trin. All right. Happy to uh, have a great chat now. Uh, Looking forward to uh, chatting with Jane Velez Mitchell, who uh, is founder of Unchained TV, uh, which is uh, streaming on television, actually, and uh, as well as multiple platforms uh, with that. So welcome, Jane. I am so glad to be here, doctor. Yeah, give us a little bit about your background, Jane. Uh, What did you do prior to Unchained TV and and why Unchained TV? Well, I I was in the mainstream media for 40 years uh, and I worked in local news as a reporter and as an anchor. I worked in syndicated TV as a reporter. I worked as a host on national cable shows, uh, including most recently CNN Headline News. I've written four books, including two New York Times bestsellers. So. Um, when I retired from that after 40 years, I really wanted to devote myself to my passion, which is waking the world up mm. to the one false underlying assumption that is underneath most of our problems. And if we just remove that one false underlying assumption, a lot of things would fall into place. And it seems very obvious to me. So when I see the world falling apart because nobody will look at that one false underlying assumption. Mm. Uh, I said, I have to do something drastic. So I created a nonprofit, Unchained TV. It is a global streaming network with hundreds, more than 700 videos. And you can get it on your Roku device, your Amazon Fire Stick. Unchained Mm -hmm. TV comes with Apple TV. It's also on your phone. You can literally just go to your app store and put in Unchained TV, one word. We don't don't ask for uh, an email or anything. We want to make this, I don't take a salary. We want to make this as easy as possible to just give people a portal to a new way of living that will save them, their health, save the animals, save the planet. Um, And it's also available online uh, mm-hmm. via unchainedtv.com. So if you say, well, I'm not technically oriented, no excuse. You can still just go to unchainedtv.com and click watch now. Wow. So what is the, the mission and the vision of Unchained TV? How is it different than TV? Or- well, TV, especially advertiser-based TV, is part of the problem. Mm. If you look at the commercials, it's fast food and pharmaceuticals, which might as well be the one in the same industry. (laughs) How are they going to sell cholesterol-lowering pills, erectile dysfunction pills, and all the other pills, the anti-depression pills, if people were eating a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet filled with fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, and legumes? There's no cholesterol in that. So um, what's wrong with our society is and particularly our healthcare system is that it's all designed to wait for you to get sick and yep. then treat you and medicate you for those illnesses. True. Doctors get precious little education in nutrition. Indeed, their health stats are no better than the general population. So they may get a couple of cursory courses, but from what I've seen, when I go into the doctor, they're filled with the same cliches and myths that most people are. So, um, They don't even understand that, oh, you don't need to drink the breast milk of a cow to get calcium. There's plenty of other sources of (laughs) calcium that are plant-based. One Google search, plant-based calcium sources will turn out uh, tons of them that you can eat every day. Whether it's broccoli or whatever you eat as opposed to drinking something that's unnatural. We're not cows. We're not designed to drink the breast milk of cows. Indeed, it's the National Institutes of Health that says, that the global majority, most people are lactose intolerant. So why is our government forcing dairy products down the throats of children in schools, in hospitals and institutions and everywhere else? In fact, in in a lot of places, you need a doctor's note to get plant-based milk. Mm. Um, Indeed, 
That's also contributing to the climate crisis. Takes three pounds of grain to make a gallon of milk. It only takes a half a pound of soybeans to make 12 gallons of soy milk. Well, I'm wow. having coffee this morning with soy milk. It tastes delicious. Here I am, filled with energy. Um, <laughs> you know, my health stats are great. They, you yeah. go to the mainstream doctors uh, and they try to kind of find out what's wrong. You go there with a tiny pinky and they'll try to connect it to your being vegan. And what about all the people in the in the yeah. hole there? They're half dead <laughs> yeah. and they're not vegans. <laughs> uh, do you ask them, is it because they're eating meat? Do you tell them that processed meat, which is how most people consume mm -hmm. meat, which includes bacon, which includes hot dogs, which includes deli slices, is officially yeah. a carcinogen according to the World Health Organization. No, yeah. they don't say that, but yeah. then, we come up with a plant-based product where it's peas mushed together with a few things to keep it together. And everybody, including the media, it's processed. It's no good for you. Right. Well, you know what? Last night I took a banana and I took some mango and I put it into a, a, a blender. That's process. All processed food is not automatically right. bad for you. But processed meat is. So, yep. Dr. Trin, has she been listening to your show? Is this one of your converts here? Because you've been <laughs> preaching this for a couple of years. The only We're doc. On the same one of, wavelength. I'm telling yeah. you, Dr. Trin is on the board of Alzheimer's down here. He's been uh, known for his talks that he gives all over town uh, for uh, healthy brain. And we talk yep. endlessly on this show. We've had different. Uh, people from Harvard and other institutes and everything on saying, how do we fix this growth in healthcare system? I wonder if you're both not on the same mission. Of course. We're both on the same mission. Absolutely. Uh, medicine today is reactive and not proactive. Uh, medicine today, you're, you're paid uh, for a sick patient. You're not paid for somebody who's well. And so the, the system is kind of jigged. Uh, in a way where uh, where it's wrong uh, we should be in the front end with nutrition and prevention and lifestyle uh, recommendations as opposed to in the back end prescribing meds uh, so we're all with you there jane uh, with that and yeah. uh, what about what so what is it in unchained tv you taking the chains off here people can access information are you producing the con or are you, are you collecting it are you the huffington We're post doing both yeah. we just did an original series the world's first reality series starring a family of pigs <laughs> Ooh, little lies. and we're about to launch the first the world's first reality series starring a chicken named hope that's coming out tomorrow Wow. So I can actually share my screen and show you a little bit. Yeah. Let's do it. I think I'm, I think I did it right. Let's see if you okay. can do it. I think yeah, you're a co-host. Let's do it here. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can share my screen right now. And you see it right there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. That's Unchained TV. Anybody who wants to a portal to a new way of living, just go to UnchainedTV.com. And mm. we, we promo some of our videos. We have more than 700 videos. We promo some at the top. And then mm. we have great stories about like Charlize Rookwood. She is helping. She's Jamaican and Mauritian. She's helping people realize that their Jamaican and Mauritian roots are plant-based. Then we have a story about meat without any animal ingredients. This is, the, I think, the biggest breakthrough, um, really, almost in the history of the planet. Wow. Basically, okay, people want their pound of flesh, right? Yeah, you know, right. I, can, I have <laughs> relatives I've talked to, uh, yeah. pun intended, till the cows come home. No. Well, this is a breakthrough that allows bioidentical meat. Essentially, they, they copy the DNA sequencing of meat. They use a yeast protein and it becomes meat bioidentically, but there's no animal involved, not even a biopsy. That's a company called Paleo out of Belgium. They are coming up with their product in 2023, next mm -hmm. year, which means that any product you have, if you have um, a dough, you can right. inject it with this substance. In other words, it's a recipe, it's a recipe ingredient, and you put that in there and bioidentically that substance becomes meat. It can be produced in giant vats. It has the possibility to feed the world. We can talk a little bit about the connection between let's, meat. Let's and talk about that for one hunger. second because we've never done that on this show. And I was just reading, <laughs> funny how you start seeing threads, Mm -hmm. bioidentical meat this is something it's sort of like manufactured artificially manufactured in a, in a sense it's 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 a substance that is if you look at it it's bioidentical 
biologically identical to meat, but it's not doesn't come from a, a living host. Uh, right. And therefore, I was just reading that in China, this is becoming quite a big deal. And some other, uh, I think it's China, where they are actually, I mean, there's something like they want to make half of their meat come this way or a third of it or something. There's some big push to use this. Are you familiar with that? Am, am I crazy? Uh, yes. I mean, it's, it's a double-edged sword when you talk about China because China, for example, Smithfield, you think, oh, an all-American company, right? right? No, it's been bought by a Chinese mm -hmm. uh, company that's one of the, if not the largest pig producer in the world and has a lot of connections to the Chinese government. Mm. So um, while there are forces within the Chinese government that are very smart and realize the first country that switches to plant-based, whether it's through bioidentical meat, cell-based meat, or just getting people to go plant-based, will dominate the next century. Because yep. what we're dealing with is a medieval system that is not working. Uh, I want to take a second, but but there are also forces within the Chinese government that are making a lot of money from uh, from the manufacture, the mass production of pigs and cows, and uh, particularly pigs. Uh, they're trying to bring because there's so much disease associated with it, create these sort of antiseptic pig uh, skyscrapers where it, it's just. Mm -hmm. It's sick, yeah. but check it out. You go to watch now, you go to Unchained TV, you go to watch now. I just want you to see what we've got. So yeah. you can, uh, check it out for yourself. Look at this, hundreds of videos, wow. hundreds of videos. Okay, we have documentaries. We have news like this This gentleman here who's a former constitutional lawyer on trial for rescuing two piglets from Smithfield hmm. in Utah. He faces decades possibly in prison for rescuing two piglets worth each $50 and they've spent millions of dollars prosecuting him. Famous comedian Kevin Hart has just opened a vegan restaurant. We were there here in L.A. near LAX. Hundreds right. of people lined up. Here's a whole concept. Should food be free, which we can talk about. Mm. Um, air, water, uh, and food are the three things you absolutely must have to survive. If we right. didn't have animal agriculture, there could be an abundance of food for everybody, and it could be a natural right, just like air. Then here's uh, Joaquin Phoenix uh, busting open the scam of biogas that, oh, they're going to take the cow farts and the manure and the uh, and from the cows, and they're going to turn it into energy. This is a, a greenwashing scam. We've got this woman, Olympian, who goes around, and her, she's amazing, Dotsy Bausch, Switch for Good. She tries to show people that it's not natural for us to drink breast milk, and she's a vegan Olympian. So we've got this woman who is absolutely incredible, uh, who does absolutely wonderful uh, recipes. We have, I mean, we this is Pig Little Eyes. This is our series over here. I could show you 10 seconds of it, uh, okay. and uh, you could see. This is a reality show about pigs? <laughs> this nice yeah it is oh is that your phone no no i've done the pigs, video wanted pair at a high kill shelter they have basically until tonight whatever it takes we're gonna get those pigs out <laughs> i don't have any place to put pigs i have pigs all over town there's nobody else who can step up for this Laura laundry room. <laughs> People just abandon these pot belly pigs, don't they? Yeah. Hey. And that's just the start of Pig Little Lies. Wow. So we also have, we have hundreds of cooking shows. Um, we have an award-winning show that we produce called New Day, New Chef, celebrity pack with hundreds and hundreds of um, incredible right. uh, chefs making, some of the top chefs in the world making incredible dishes. So um if you see some of this uh nice. you Lori, you know what this is so exciting did you know our next celebrity chef is trending on twitter yes i did that's very exciting i know and, and you know what i also heard he's a member of the cia wait a second I <laughs> <laughs> 
So how do you sustain this thing? Is this just a non-profit? Is this a passion project? Is yeah, this how for... Do you sustain this? this is amazing. Donations! Donations! Really? Uh, I, I will tell you that I take no salary. This right. is a labor of love. Basically, I'm using all the skills that I acquired over 40 years in mainstream media, including working at CNN and working at... Uh, KCAL here in Los Angeles, working at WCBS TV in New York. Right. And, uh, so I showed you two original program, but we have wow. tons of programming that is not like documentaries. We just got this documentary Sanctuary in, which is um, from uh, Shannon Keith, who um, is doing a story about monkeys rescued from the horrors of laboratories and entertainment. Mm. We also did our own documentary called Countdown to Year Zero, which basically says we have to transition to a global plant-based diet by the end of the decade, or we're going to go into extinction. Yep. Um, you know, we have a profile of the man behind National Animal Rights Day um, who lost his entire family in the wow. Holocaust and decided yeah. to do this special service for animals killed. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. Yep. Uh, Nike killing kangaroos. Uh, we have... Uh, we show protests. I mean, I could show you a quick protest. Uh, yeah. They hunt these kangaroos down in the dark of night, and they blow their heads off. We are pleading with Nike to stop massacring kangaroos. They're going to pay attention to us here. Two million kangaroos are killed each year. Massacres we don't control. Leave the kangaroos alone. Kangaroos are not shoes. Just stop the slaughter. Some of the kangaroos who they kill have babies with jellies in their pouches. Those babies die! Kangaroos are not fashion! Where the hell is your compassion? So we do a lot of that. We invite Nike on, of course, yeah. anytime to hear their side of the story, but... Why would well, Nike? You know, so you got to give us some leather, kangaroo leather, right? We don't need it in today's society. Oh, I was going to ask. You have to give me some perspective why they would do this. So they're using it for the pro production of their shoes. They're using the yeah, the... like do you, you know? We don't need to wear leather belts. We don't need to wear leather shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no leather in my apartment. Okay, mm -hmm. um, it's it's what we are in the midst of is a an evolution in the form of a consumer revolution. Yeah. There is no need for anybody to walk around in leather shoes. That's something out, of, it needs to go in the dustbin of history. Um, just like there were medieval torture museums in Europe and you look at it and you go, whoa, how could we have put anybody in a rack? Well, we, what we do to these animals, pigs are kept in crates the size of their bodies, literally never able to turn around. I honestly didn't believe it. When I first saw it, I said, there's no way. But they keep hundreds of thousands of these pigs, millions, billions, billions yeah. uh, of these pigs like that. And that's why this guy, who is a law professor, okay, a Wayne Shung, he uh, risked his life to rest, to go in there because um, he says, you know, Smithfield made a commitment to stop the gestation crates. And they didn't, so he went in and he videotaped his mm -hmm. entire thing with 3D cameras, highly intelligent person. He went in there, videotaped it as part of direct action everywhere, what he calls an open rescue, what he's being prosecuted for, and he mm -hmm. could do a long time in prison, and they won't let him show the video of the crime in progress at the trial. Wow. Okay? Now, this guy is... We are here with Wayne Shung, who is one of the founders of DXE, Direct Action Everywhere, an amazing constitutional lawyer and a former law professor, as well as a leader in the animal rights movement and the vegan movement. Tell us what is happening in your life right now, Wayne. I'm facing prosecution it's in relation to removing sick and injured animals. The government and industry have been working together to prosecute animal rights activists who are engaged in completely nonviolent tactics just to expose and try to remedy the horrific cruelty to animals that's unfolding in these facilities. They could face potentially, I think, decades in prison if I'm convicted on all these charges. They're also a tremendous opportunity for us to litigate the question of animal rights in a court of law. So. I'm scared and my family is terrified about the prospect of me being in prison for a long time, but we also know that if we get evidence before a jury and show them the violence that's happened to animals, yep. we've got a good shot at winning this case and changing the law.
except oh and you can see it. there they are they video take the entire thing going in wow no secrets no secrets look at this for a second this is where your bacon comes from this is a modern farm modern farm in the usa This facility is massive. Even just this one barn, you can see down here, aisle after aisle after aisle of mother pigs. There are hundreds, hundreds of mother pigs, and even just this one barn. But there's 75,000 mothers just like this, 75,000 stalls just like hers. So you hear this constant clanging in this facility because these mother pigs are desperate to get out of the crate. They're smashing their heads up against these crests to the point that they have swelling on their faces, cuts on their faces, and amazingly, this mother pig actually broke the bars, and so they had to tie them shut. You can see she broke open the bars, she was so desperate to escape, but there's no escape. So, there you go. Now, this should be on the front page of the New York Times. The court will not allow him to show that video. Because wow. they said it might horrify the jury that will then make an emotional decision. Right. The whole reason he went in there what, was let, to let, show the world. Let's yeah. uh, let's go back a little bit again and look at the whole Unchained TV. So obviously, you're. I'm going to assume that you're a vegan and have been for a while. Yeah, uh, 26 years. And that um, the and that um, you're collecting videos about others because there's a, quite a lot of vegan activists out there these days. That whole movement has been growing phenomenal. I happen to know my sister-in-law is a very big vegan activist up in L.A. In fact, if I, after the show, if you're interested, I'll introduce you. She's friends with Kevin uh, Neal and, and Alicia Silverstone. She was on um, uh, uh, John Robbins' uh, Earth, whatever that group was called, that he founded, the founder yes, of Baskin yes. Robbins right. and all that stuff. She's very involved in this, has been for dedicated her whole life to this. And in the beginning, it was kind of a fringe thing. You know, it was not something most people would, would welcome or talk about or li even listen to. I've seen that change dramatically for the number of years, particularly with young people. More and more young people are by choice choosing a different lifestyle, of choosing to be a vegan. I myself reluctantly get pulled into some of this stuff and then I start saying, well, this isn't so bad. That uh, soy milk tastes the same as regular milk. Why am I so hung up on having regular milk? That fake bacon doesn't taste so bad. In fact, I can't tell the difference after a while. So, you know, if there isn't any impact to me, can I learn to make a change? Even if there is an impact, can I learn to make a change? What are you seeing out there? I mean, am I right? Is the world moving oh, in this yeah. direction? Absolutely. I mean, this is the fastest growing sector of the supermarket uh, chain, the supermarket sector. It's the fastest growing part of the supermarket sector. Uh, we have vegan restaurants propping up everywhere. The Kevin Hart restaurant. Now, Kevin Hart himself isn't a vegan, mm -hmm. but he opened a vegan restaurant. And um, I could show you hundreds of people showed up. Um, we did a whole story on it. Uh, it, it really and they weren't vegan. They just want the options. I mean, I could show you very quickly, 10 seconds, because this is a very fun video. We just, we just launched it. Unchained TV at the grand opening of Hard House in Los Angeles. Just a stone's throw from LAX, the international airport. This is a vegan fast food joint owned and named after the famous comedian Kevin Hart. People are going crazy. The line is literally down the block and then again. News media here in droves to catch the very first person getting the very first meal here at Hart House. This is going to be nationwide and global. It's not just here in L.A. People are honking their support. We also want to get into the Hollywood area, Las Vegas. We're talking about Atlanta, Philadelphia, Florida, San Diego. So you get the idea. It's, yep. It was a madhouse, and I literally uh, was shocked. I missed, almost missed a line uh, that I thought, well, I'm going to leave. And then I went and went, Wait, what's that across the street? And there was a line of 200 people waiting across the street. Yeah. It, so there is a demand for this. See, 
I did this documentary, which is also available on Unchained TV, called Countdown to Year Zero, profiling the work of Dr. Silas Rao, who mm. is um, Stanford educated, mm -hmm. uh, internet. He was instrumental in accelerating internet speeds. I personally consider him a genius. And, you know, what he says, which I think is so brilliant, is we're all being factory farmed. It's not just the animals. Humans are being factory farmed, too. Even the ranchers and farmers are being factory farmed. The slaughterhouse workers are being factory farmed. This is a giant system that is making a very small, pe ver very tiny sliver potential of people, sliver of people, less than the 0.1%, enormously rich. And guess what? Those people have private chefs. Those people are not eating the bad food. Their kids don't have type 2 diabetes and obesity. So this is a giant scam, and our entire network is designed to rip open the meat matrix. That's what I call it. We're all living in the meat matrix. Mm. I'm not. The doctor isn't, but everybody else is. It's the normalized violence, okay? We kill more animals in one day than all the human beings who have lived in the history of the world. There is something wrong with that. I don't care whether you're a Christian, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Buddhist, what would Jesus say? What would Buddha say about what you saw in that factory farm? It's morally reprehensible. But society is saying, don't worry about that. You get a, you get a get out of jail free card on that. You get a pass on that. Well, because it's sanitized and we don't see any of this stuff. We, we just see, see the product That's arrive the on the shelf and it tastes good, we think, or we're trained to think it tastes good or we've whatever it is, you know, we react to it and, and we don't think of where it comes from or how it's made or where it comes from here. Um, well, I, I uh, uh, applaud you in the efforts that you're doing here. What kind of response has the network gotten? You're on all these channels. Uh, this is kind of the Wild West of uh, the future of television here. Things like Roku and Fire Stick and stuff where there are more and more entrepreneurs like you creating these unique channels with a unique voice and stuff you don't see anywhere else here. Uh, has the door been ripped off? Uh, has the Band-Aid been ripped off and now we're looking at a whole new uh, world of uh, television that you you participated in? You were part of the, the, the big three, the handful of uh, local TV channels. Now there's a billion YouTube channels and a billion voices out there. Is this the new wave of uh, broadcasting? Yes. I mean, the only thing that you can be sure of is that change is constant. And we pivoted to the app, the streaming network, Unchained TV, because... When I first started this, okay, so I was with CNN till uh, late 2014, mm -hmm. and I literally had turned 59 and a half at that point. And so I knew it was retirement time. I mean, I don't want those people who hangs on and gets older and older. And, right. You know, yeah. we all know that. I said, look, I've worked 40 years. It's enough. I'm going to now do my passion project. Now, I was able to do a weekly segment Every week for six years when I had my show on CNN Headline News about animal rights, I, I interviewed some of the top leaders in animal rights. Basically, uh, I've been covering uh, the Michael Jackson trial for a syndicated TV show, and then I started, I was reporting for the Nancy Gray show, and uh, once that, once the show I was on ended, I started to do fill-in work and fill-in for Nancy when she went on vacation, and then one day... What I hear, I don't know for sure, Glenn Beck walked off the set. He had the show prior to Nancy, and so they wanted to fill it quickly, so they get, call me. At like 6 in the morning, I was sitting right there having a cup of coffee, and they said, how would you like your own show? And I said, <laughs> I'd like that. <laughs> at that moment, I was unemployed. My show had just ended. They said, okay, do the show from L.A. today and get on a plane tomorrow and go to New York. And the first thing I did was rush to the vet to get my dog certified to fly, and I went to New York, and I grew up in New York, in Midtown Manhattan, right across from Carnegie Hall, which happened right. to be three blocks from where CNN was located at the time, at Time Warner Center. And my mom lived there. Uh, so she has, she's now passed away. She, by the way, she was essentially vegan, and she lived to 99 and a half and was sharp as a whip up until a week before she died. Okay? <laughs> she was the original animal rights activist. So... Uh, I, I said very casually as I got the job, I thought I was going to be there for two months. That's why I kept my condo here in L.A., right. but I ended up having the show for six years. I said to them, would you mind if I did a little segment about animals once a week? Because it was a crime show. And they right. thought that. They said, 
no, we don't see a problem with that. That's okay. Well, they probably thought I was going to do pet adoptions. <laughs> I, was I, ju I dove in with the pig gestation crates, what I just showed you there. Yeah. I showed that. I showed the tail docking of the fact that they kill all the male chicks. Now, to their credit, they never stopped me. They Sometimes they'd say this is too graphic, but okay. I'll always be grateful. I mean, Josh Tetrick, who runs um, just – the Just Company, which at the time was Just Mayo, I did one of the first interviews with him that he said he used and and, and went around and raised funds for what is now one of the biggest uh, vegan companies in the world. So I feel very you know, yeah. honored to have been able to have done that. But then when the show ended, I actually went to the one of the executives and I said, what do you think I should do? One of the top executives, and she said, um, this is what know, a court at what was it court TV or is that where no, this was CNN headline news CNN headline, headline news okay yeah. right. I also worked at court TV and covered trials there right. but um, she said look Jane you're obviously very passionate about animals and about health and plant based and veganism do that so I thought she's right so mm -hmm. I started out with a little GoPro camera the first protest I covered was in nine degrees in Brooklyn at the Staples Center 200 people protesting against animals being used in Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, my hand was shaking. I thought, oh, my God, what am I doing? But what I realized is hundreds of people showed up. It's freezing. Nobody's really looking at them. They're racing to get indoors, and nobody's documenting it. So right. I found my niche. And then when Facebook Live came along, we oh, yeah. started, shifted everything. We had, like, 17 million views on Facebook Wow. Uh, I believe it was around 2017, but then it started going down 11, 11 million, 9 mm -hmm. million. Then Facebook changed their algorithms because of everything that happened with Cambridge Analytica and the whole, yep. right. you know. Uh, they so, were tracking people's behavior for uh, political ads and all the exactly. other stuff. Right? So right. they yeah. changed their algorithms and then the views started going down. That's when we decided, see, you have to constantly pivot in this business. Everything's yeah. changing. So we were like, Okay, we we did a documentary. We did the New Day New Chef cooking show. We put it on Amazon Prime. It's still there on Amazon Prime. It had an incredible run. But then after oh, numerous months, I can't say exactly when, they decided to start charging 99 cents an episode. That's oh, yeah. when our views on Amazon Prime went down. Mm. So uh, at that point, our director, who's quite a brilliant guy, uh, he's an Emmy-winning producer-director, he said, well... He's Irish. He said, well, you can have your own streaming network if you want. We can break <laughs> down. I said, let's do it. I yeah. literally threw my hat over the fence. I had no idea how much yeah. work. People think I have hundreds of people. Like they're having, they 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 text me, you know, or email me, have your IT team coordinate with our IT team. It's like, <laughs> right. I'm what sitting here on my couch with four people yeah. working around the clock from seven in the morning till 11 o'clock at night because I wear all these hats. I shoot video. I edit. I yeah. also upload the videos to the app. I oh, also yeah. do the weekly newsletter. Like as soon as I get off with you, I have to create GIFs for the news, yeah. for the email blast that goes out twice a week. I do news releases. Last night I was up till midnight doing a news release that just came out this morning. So wow. all these all these roles, which having worked at networks for 40 years, I know the yeah. roles, but basically with the exception of I have four people helping me who are honestly working for a pittance, a right. pittance. Mm. And um, they do it primarily as a passion, passion. but, you know, they've got to pay some bills. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we so do you're back it to run and gun story. journalism, as they used to call it here. It's a it's a it's a two person, one person crew. And you're going out and and capturing stuff and grabbing stuff and editing and posting it and uploading it and everything here. It's back to the yeah. back to the early days of journalism, of, uh, of television journalism here. <laughs> Or, or guerrilla filmmaking, where you're right. just out in the street doing this stuff. All right, so we wondering if do you have, if you're looking for other partnerships with other entities, because there's a lot of vegan activists, a lot of vegan networks out there, a lot of One vegan content. We can, you know, there's there's data out there, and I'm in the field of, of research and medicine and all that. There's there's good data out there that nutrition alone can lower your risk of Alzheimer's by fifty percent. Plant-based diet. Doctor, I am so glad you said that. Look, yes. I'm the first person to say I'm not a scientist, but I would love to have you on to discuss this. Absolutely. Because 
I don't know about you, but it seems like every person I talk to, their parents are have dementia or Alzheimer's. Yep. Okay, yep. and it's it seems to be skyrocketing. It's one of the and top killers. Uh, you know, people don't think of it. Number along three with... killer among older Americans today. Number three killer. Now, what somebody explained to me, and again, I'm saying this audience, I'm not a scientist, he's the doctor, is that when your body gets clogged with cholesterol, it's systemic. Yep. That's why, sorry guys, erectile dysfunction is a precursor of heart disease. You correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, doctor. That's uh, true. The vessels in that part of the body are smaller, narrower than the vessels going to the heart. So when you have plaque, which comes from cholesterol, which comes from animal products. Okay, we're animals, we produce our own cholesterol. If we have high cholesterol, unless we have some rare genetic predisposition to high cholesterol, chances are we're eating too much meat and dairy. So that cholesterol manifests as plaque, but it doesn't just go to the heart, it goes all over the place. Now you've got vessels in Absolutely. your brain too, and Absolutely. they're getting clogged. I, I have a woman who just joined our team Mm -hmm. And she, her mother died, and she had a mom who had Alzheimer's or dementia. I don't know actually the scientific distinction between those two, right. but she, who is vegan, had enough with the doctors. She was yeah. arguing with the doctors. She put her mother on a whole food plant based diet, mm -hmm. and she reversed her dementia, according to her. I don't mm -hmm. want to make claims that, you yeah. know, the FDA yeah. comes barging through the door. But right. this is her story. She's doing a documentary on it for Unshamed TV right now. Well, talk about that. just real quickly, Dr. Toon. You had the one guy on from, what was it, the National Alzheimer's Association? I forgot the exact organization. He was talking about the breakthrough in uh, Alzheimer's uh, treatments and drugs and some other stuff he was talking about be going before Congress. And the gist of it is that they think, or you all seem to think, that Alzheimer's has a certain some kind of a plaque you you, you describe there's it there's a plaque there's an alzheimer's plaque that builds up in the brain it's called the amyloid or beta amyloid and that plaque is associated with alzheimer's so if you have alzheimer's the plaque's there a hundred percent the question is why is the plaque there and and there and multiple reasons people say genetics and genetics play a, a role but a smaller role the plaque is there because of lifestyle nutrition diet, exercise. And so, so the plaque is a consequence of that. Uh, and so this is where, this is where Jane, it, the message doesn't get out to the patient uh, because the docs spend 10 minutes with you and they're refilling your meds. They're sending you to specialists. They're, you know, putting in a referral and, and different things. And there's no room to discuss prevention and lifestyle through nutrition and, and things of that sort. And so I, this is why I really love the, the fact that you have Unchained TV, because it does get outside of our system uh, that is entrenched in, uh, you know, in, in things that aren't healthy for us. Uh, I'll well, give you another thing that uh, you may say, not, well. I'll give you one more thing that Dr. Trin's doing that might, I'm just trying to brainstorm live here in front of everybody here. So, yes, he's involved in this kind of Alzheimer's research. He runs a research uh, clinic. He's on the board of Alzheimer's. He's on some various different uh, boards of companies trying to seek solutions for this kind of stuff, um, uh, including UCI, where they're experimenting with a lot of this uh, stuff here. The medical devices and medical industry is centered here at UCI, at least in Orange County. Having said that, he's got this other crazy project, which kind of seems like your kind of crazy project. He's not created a, an online uh, streaming channel like you have. He's created an online metaverse that they're actually building out with some other researchers and scientists and wealthy investors, uh, one of which, of all things, is a guy that uh, speaks a lot here at the university, um, a guy um, who was a, one of the founders of NWA, the rap group, and uh, along with Ice Cube and all these guys, and he is actually taking the money he's made and tried to make a difference with it. And he uh, has been involved in a lot of uh, medical technology startups here at UCI. He's been on our Arabian channel Prince. several. They call yeah. it, 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 it <laughs> never. They never have a normal name. It's Arabian Prince, but he's a really yeah. cool guy. He's on the board of a. Uh, and what they're trying to do is, it, it, Dr. Trin can explain this better than I can, is to create another space, another place, where people can gather share ideas and information, and maybe even find other ways to get telehealth or get things in addition to or outside of the normal networks. It's not just an information network. 
It's a gathering of people. And they've set this up even crazier as a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, meaning it's like a co-op. So as people right. opt into this thing, they all get a say in what happened. And, and, and imagine if we all got to say what Facebook did. We participate, we gladly join, but we have no say in what the direction of the company is. The, Dr. Trin and his other founders of this metaverse have said, no, once we get this going, we'll administer it, but it's the community that decides which way. Is this just information? Is this actives? Is this activists? Is this, uh, are we going to change the healthcare? Are we just going to modify it? Are we going to give you something, a supplement to it? What do you want to do with this gathering, this virtual gathering, this metaverse uh, of people? Do we do uh, broadcast shows? Do we offer live uh, town hall seminars? Do we offer other services through providers, alternative providers? I don't know. Talk about that a little bit, Dr. Tren. That, Cause I think that's, you're all moving in this kind of same yeah. direction to keep people other choices and other bits of information. He's doing it through yeah. a, a, a slightly so you've different heard the platform. Term metaverse, it's web 3.0, it's uh, the stuff that's coming. Uh, so we're, we're creating a platform for healthcare that takes healthcare out of the different silos that exist today. Um, and we want to create healthcare that is integrative, where we bring in the, the naturopathic doctor, where we bring in uh, other folks that have been shunned by Western healthcare, possibly, and create more integrative healthcare. Uh, and we want to give platforms for folks, uh, obviously, that are evidence based and things of that sort, but, uh, but to create care that's virtual create care that is at home rather than, you know, uh, going to the doctor. We want to bring the doctor to your home uh, through video chats or different things or remote patient monitoring. So I'm going to be up in Los Angeles today. I'll be up at uh, <clears throat> Glendale Boulevard. Uh, and we have uh, our summit today. It's called MD Dow, mddow.com. You can check us out. But we have a summit today. We have UC Irvine professors coming up to speak. Uh, you're totally welcome to drop by if you're close by, Jane. And, and meet our team up there. And, but, and again, uh, it's another, it's, a, it's an attempt yeah. which you're both trying to do to break uh -huh. out of the norm and to give yes. people other information through the power of the internet, either in an actual, uh, an online streaming channel where you can watch all these videos through all the different platforms you'd get, Apple TV and what, and Roku and stuff, or in addition to, not instead of, but in addition to, there's a place that then you can gather and hang out and share ideas and information and attend mm -hmm. a, a virtual events and maybe sign up for services or meet other practitioners outside of just the normal box. And some of those could be nutritionists and vegan and all these mm -hmm. other things. Sir. And so, yeah, I'd like to establish a world headquarters for Unshade TV uh, in your metaverse because I tried to do that in Decentraland mm -hmm. and the prices were so high. Because really? Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe I was looking in the wrong place. I obviously am not a, a, a metaverse expert, but I went into Decentraland and I was looking right. around and I guess, you know, even in the metaverse, it's location, location, location. Right. Yes. So you want to be near like a big star who bought something. And yes, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah, some yeah. big star bought something and then all the prices around there went up. Yeah. And I was just thinking, well, maybe I could get a giant poster that says Unchained TV, like a billboard. Right. Uh, but I didn't get too far because the prices seemed really high. I was like, wow. It's going point, up. I could put a billboard on Sunset Boulevard. Um, so I would love to create like a virtual maybe movie theater on your app, uh, your metaverse. That's and what I was thinking. Go yeah. in and watch all these films there. That's exactly what I was thinking. Because absolutely, absolutely, yeah. we'll uh, we'll talk uh, on the side. If if you have time or day, you can drop by. I'll be up in Los Angeles today. What's the place and where you, you at? And, uh, you you they, can meet our uh, co-founders, uh, Arabian Prince from NWA, and a and a few other folks. Uh, I think uh, Legre Legri, he's a uh, he's a fitness guy. Is uh, going to be there. Uh, you you with got us. a bunch of other like minded people that are trying to all gather and find spaces and places to tell these stories and to give people we can information. Get on GTD, onto our MD DAO uh, metaverse platform, Jane. We can definitely. Oh, that would be that. wonderful. And I'd like to take, first of all, I want to interview you because. I have been going on and on about this Alzheimer's because I work closely with Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and Dr. Neil Barnard actually did some uh, video clips for our show, New Day, New Chef. We had uh, doctors 
opining on the diets. Like if we made something with kale, what's the nutritional ingredient and what is the benefit of kale? And so he's a great guy. And, you know, he wrote the cheese trap and explains why cheese is so addictive because of casein. That's like a morphine like substance that um, is concentrated in cheese. So it's very hard for people to give up cheese. See, they think, oh, it's just because I like cheese. No, they're addicts. I wrote a book called Addict Nation. We live in an addictogenic culture. There's no better customer than an addict. Yeah, right. An addict will come back over and over and over again. If you want power, addict people to things. That's why fast food Cigarettes, is booze, fast food, fast uh, food pornography, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. That. That's right. what we are biologically pre-programmed to crave. So we're living in an addictogenic culture that is truly That's sick. Our longevity is going down in America. It is. Okay? Yep. Yeah, for the first time, I mean, they've been talking about that, how it's actually reversing yeah. itself here. Well, I think there's some synergy. I know we're down to the last couple of minutes here, so maybe you can hang around for just a moment after line. We'll connect the two of you. Because I, yes. I I, sit here at, at uh, OC Talk Radio as this kind of unique voice. We're kind of an online radio station or a collection of podcasts that we stream live and then turn them into podcasts, whatever you want to consider it. And we mostly do brand stuff, business shows and other things. We do shows for Pedigo Electric Bikes and uh, we're starting one for the City of Hope Hospital and we do one for UCI and all these kind of entities that want to tell their stories to their communities about who they are and what they're doing, storytelling. Um, but, and Dr. trin has been doing this for a couple of years. In the beginning, I thought, I don't know how this fits into our story. As he tells these alternative stories, uh, here he is a man in the world of medicine. He's on various boards. He's, he's still an emergency room doctor. He does all these things. And yet he keeps saying, we got to do better. We got to do better. This, this idea of uh, fee for service, you come in for five minutes, I give you a pill or a procedure next. I don't talk about diet. I don't talk about lifestyle. I don't take a holistic approach. I don't look at anything outside of my little toolbox here. Uh, and I do it very quickly. And it, it works in certain circumstances if you have a, a broken leg or something. But there are more and more people that are saying, I got an ache. I got a pain. I got a problem. I don't know why I can't. I'm getting Alzheimer's. I'm getting all these other things here. And doctors go, I don't know. I don't know. There is no answer for this. So people are hungry for answers. That's why they shop at Mother's and Whole yeah. Earth. That's why they're becoming vegans. That's why they're trying Chinese medicine and acupuncture. So they're trying all sorts of things out there because they're not getting satisfied through the medical system. They, they have no answers for these these chronic conditions Let and me say this: problems. If you're a business show, we're not going to have any business. UPS workers are fainting in the street because it's so huh? hot. Yeah. Cows. There was a videotape that somebody put on TikTok. It should have been on the news, but it wasn't because, again, the news has been meat, dairy, pharmaceuticals. Okay. These industries have co-opted the government. The head of the United States Department of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack, is a dairy industry trade group leader. Yeah. Right. Mm. OK, so they've co-opted government, they've co-opted the media, uh, they've co-opted the courts, the court system. Look to, to wit, look what's happening to Wayne Shung. Um, now, if it gets too hot, OK, right. to support human life or what happened in Kansas the other day, and thanks to TikTok, we saw it, there was somebody with a camera driving and showing thousands of dead cows with their legs up in the air. Yeah, thousands right. and thousands wow. and thousands. They wow. died from the heat. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. This system is going to collapse, not to mention the environmental climate apocalypse, um, the, the glaciers that are hanging on by a thread. There's that Is one mega glacier I was just reading about in I, Greenland or something. That's And then if they literally, this finally breaks off, they said, the recent article said it's hanging on by a, a thread. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, come on. Is that good for business? If people can't walk outside, people are fainting? And then they put on their air conditioner, which accelerates climate change even more. We are hitting a point of no return. Dr. Rao, who again, I say is a genius, and a lot of the things he says goes right over my head. Mm -hmm. But he says we have literally, well, he believes till 2026 to transition to a primary plant-based society. Mm -hmm. That's why I say the bioidentical meat and even the cell-based meat, whatever, because people who are in their disease, they haven't hit bottom, they cannot give up this product well, then we're going to give it to them without the animal. You can create meat without the animal. And the last thing I'll say is, as human beings, there are 20 million people 
on the verge of starvation in Africa. In Somalia, the starvation crisis is out of control. You see pictures of these kids with these bloated yeah. bellies and their sunken cheeks. We are taking most of our food, or at least a good percentage, you can quibble about the percentages, and feeding it to 80 billion animals, the most inefficient food system. So I get infuriated when people who are dealing with world hunger or local hunger give out meat to people. I have a friend who's an elderly vegan woman, and these, and she's on a very limited income, and these people come along, we're going to feed you, and they give her a pastrami sandwich. And she's like, I don't want this. Right. See, but it's not funny. It's like, yeah, we are not that smart a species. Mm -hmm. Remember, the best and the brightest was a sarcastic term. It was the best and the brightest brought us the Vietnam War. <laughs> we are right. listening to people who are literally not only living in the meat matrix, they design the meat matrix, they're profiting off the meat matrix, and we're the suckers who are think yeah. we're exercising our right of free choice to eat this. We're just being factory farmed. We're not thinking for ourselves. I'll, I'll leave you with one thing. Okay. The other day, this woman was in a fast food joint. She was eating uh, something, whatever they eat there, and she opened it up, and on one of the processed meat things, a nipple had popped out. Mm. And she screamed, and it was a big news story. What a horror. Well, who did she think she was eating? Yeah. Well, this th is the disconnect. Exactly. Who the hell did she think she was eating all those years? Yep. She thought she was eating something, a McDonald's hamburger. She thought she was eating chicken nuggets. Go show me what part of the chicken the nuggets come from here. Yeah, exactly. Wow, well, powerful. Powerful stuff. So Jane, we, uh, let's talk. Uh, I'm gonna, I have a, a nine o'clock uh, meeting, but uh, I will certainly email you and we'll uh, communicate and I'll send you my cell number and uh, we'll definitely have to chat and collaborate. I would love to. I would love to have all your wisdom yeah. and videos on Unshade TV. We can create a channel for you. I would love to he's, collaborate. He's got a lot of this stuff. That's why we brought him on OC Talk Radio. He's a he's a he's a uh, well known figure here in the county and uh, and beyond through his work with Alzheimer's, through his work with uh, healthy brains, through his uh, medical missions he does to Vietnam and elsewhere here. He's got all sorts of multi layers and this new metaverse that he's put together with a group of investors and high tech uh, people here uh, to, to create a space and place where people can tell these kinds of stories and hear this information, rethink medicine as we know it. Love it. All right, guys, take care. Thank, Thank you. you it, was, it was an honor. All Thank right. you so much. All right. Okay. Wow. Well, there you hear it. People of like minds all finding a way to tell a different story in a different way. Join us as we talk more about changing the healthcare system and the whole paradigm as we know it. And lead a healthier life through health talks like this. Right here in Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center.